let's just go here. This is in 2 Corinthians uh, 3.12. And, uh, it's, and I, it's, it's our hope. Our hope is in Christ. It's so, it's so big. 2 Corinthians 3.12. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we behave with great boldness. And not like Moses, who used to put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from staring as the result of the glory that, that was made and affected, but their minds were closed. For to this very day, the same veil remains when they hear of the old covenant read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. But until this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, present there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled faces, reflecting the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from one degree of glory to another, which is from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So when we, what we have in, in, this, in this revelation with, with, with Christ, this, this new and better covenant, Hebrews 8, right? I'm not going to get into all the scriptures. Hebrews 8, we have such a new and better covenant. It's far superior to them. In fact, it says if there was nothing wrong with the old covenant, we wouldn't need a new one. In the old covenant, what we have is we have the Old Testament, right, which is the law of sin and death. God holds us all over to disobedience so that he can show mercy on us all. All sin came through Adam. We're all reconciled through Christ. Right? So Jesus said, if your eye is single, you'll be full of light. So like when we read the word, if we're not seeing Christ through that, in everything we look at, it, the, old, in, in the early disciples, right, the apostles, they didn't have the New Testament. They had the Old Testament. And what they did is they were proving that Jesus was the Messiah through the Old Testament. Like we, I love the word. I read the Old Testament. I just finished Ezekiel and Isaiah and some other stuff. But now what I look for is prophecies. You know, I see man separated from God crying out for a Savior. And God saying, right, I haven't changed. He's coming. I haven't changed. He's coming. This battle's. I don't have the books of the angels, nor, nor do you. But we know that God's not a man that he should lie. It's impossible for God to lie. But we have an adversary. And he plays the devil even against himself. He won't even violate his word against the devil. Will not. He cannot. It's impossible for him to. So Satan's playing this thing against him all the time. In fact, played it so much that he thought if he killed the Messiah, he won. And he played right into God's hand. He said, you kill him, I win. Finished deal. It's the finished work of Christ. Okay? So when, what, we, what we talk about a lot is, I'm just trying to give you some background, through Genesis to Revelations, right? Christ. In Revelations, uh, if I have that here, I probably don't. Uh, well, he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. I won't go look it up. I'm just going to quote it, right? Everything is revealed through Christ. Everything is revealed through Christ. Everything came through him. Everything goes back through him. And what's really amazing in this, our hope is, and our revelation is, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Remember that part I just read in Corinthians? As we are being transformed more and more into the likeness of Christ, right? From glory to glory, from revelation to revelation. And a lot of times what happens, you know, we all know people who have struggled in different areas of their life. Whether it's whatever, you know, whatever sin it is. And when I was, went to Narcotics Anonymous before, hi, I'm Keith, I'm an addict. I never say that anymore because I don't live that way anymore because it's not who I am. Hi. I'm Keith. I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things that pass away. I've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, right? All things are new, and that's who I am. And in that, and walking this out, what I really realize, what we believe is critical about how we live the Christian life. In the world, we always say seeing is believing, right? But in faith, it's reversed. It's what you believe and what you think determines who you are. So... Jesus said this. He said, my words and, and being led by the Spirit. I'm not, I've had rain of revelation from the Holy Spirit. I get that. And sometimes we try to hear God that way. And I'm not against that. Measure it against the Word. Make sure you're hearing from God. That's all good. And I do that. But the reality is that we have the Logos, the written Word of God, to lead us by the Holy Spirit. So we can get into that. And if you want to be led by the Spirit, Jesus said, my words are spirit and life, right? So we get in the Word, and we ask the Holy Spirit to lead us. Now, predominantly, what I encourage believers to do in my home group is not to get so heavy in the Old Testament, especially right away, until you get a bigger revelation of who Christ is. You read John, you read Acts, right? you read the Gospel, who Jesus is, what he did. You read Acts, the Holy Spirit comes. And then you get into the epistles, right? I had a friend of mine who read Philippians 2 for 13 weeks. The Holy Spirit said, I don't want you to read anything but this. And Philippians 2, many of you know, is entitled, Imitating the Humility of Christ. And, the, and in the beginning, the Word was with God. The Word became flesh. The Word dwelt among men, right? And we want to read that Word 
Jesus said, I have, I have food to eat that you know not of. My food is to do the will of him. I am the bread of heaven. Right? So, so in eating that food, we want that to transform us by the Spirit, and then it becomes flesh in us. So the Bible says, as I think, so am I. So when I used to think wrong thoughts, that I was this way, to a point where I wanted to commit suicide, isn't it interesting how the mind can get renewed through the washing of the Word? Okay? And so that's the biggest thing is to try to encourage people to get in the Word. I mean, I'm not saying you're not saying if you don't read the Word, I'm not saying that you're not going to heaven, I'm not saying any of that stuff. Because there's nothing that you can do to, to, to earn your way there. It's the finished work of Christ. But you need to believe on the finished work of Christ. What he did by putting his son on the cross is way bigger than what your dad didn't did, it, did or didn't do, what you did or didn't do, what's been done to you, the persecutions that you go through. It's a really big deal. In fact, it's an eternal perspective. If we don't get an eternal perspective of why we're saved, Life has the potential to hammer us constantly to the point that it's easy to walk away from our faith. Okay? You know, why God this? Why God that? Why isn't this happening? Why isn't that happening? Why did this happen to me? How is it that the, the apostles and the writers of the New Testament were writing things like they joyfully accepted the confiscation of their goods? I count it all joy to suffer for the name, right? You know what I mean? Paul wrote four of the, four of the Gospels while he was in prison. Ephesians, Colossians, Philemon, and Philippians, right? And he's writing to us, encouraging us from a place where we would be needed encouraged. And I'm not saying that it's bad to encourage people in prison. Of course, we're supposed to go visit them. Right on. So some of this is, I hope this is making some sense, right? So it's really about the transformation and becoming who it says we are. I'm a saint, okay? And what does it mean to be a saint, right? Well, it means that all the promises that he's given in Christ are mine. Okay? All the promises are yes and amen in Christ. All of them. You know? So when I read my, when I, when I was sharing this with my wife recently, is like taking the gospel personal as opposed to taking life personal or what people say personal or what did or didn't happen. You didn't get the job, you did get the job, whatever, right? So when we read the gospel, it's like a lot of times there's so much information. I'm not against reading the Daily Bread. But I, I think sometimes rereading things over and over and over and again until they become stored up in your heart, right? Because when you squeeze, we, we, we like to say this, when you squeeze an orange, what comes out? Orange juice, right? When you squeeze an orange, if something comes out besides orange juice, it kind of freaks you out. Because <laughs> I wouldn't be drinking it, right? Well, unfortunately, the devil knows that when he squeezes most Christians, everything but Christ comes out. He knows if I can just press on this a little bit, just hit this button, if I can just take this thing from them. And really the thing for that is, 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 ha it, it is for us is to be able to get to a place that we so surrender our life, that we so die to ourselves, right? Jesus didn't pray, say this. He didn't say, let's pray a prayer to get our name written in the book of life. I get that. We celebrate that. Heaven's a great reward. He didn't say that. He said, deny ourselves, die to ourselves, take up your cross and follow me. You know, whatever you give up here, there's a reward in heaven. We have to get the reality that this is a bigger deal than what we make it here on earth. And in the American church, and, I, and I'm not knocking, I live in America, and I know our circumstances are different, our temptations are different. But a lot of times we haven't suffered the persecution. A lot of times, like some of our brothers and sisters in other, other parts of the world have. And the book says that the godly will suffer persecution. Okay, let's go to... 